Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Monday, March 18th, 2019. Free pick coming up in the NBA. Uh, first, a quick note, if you've yet to uh, take advantage of this, and if you're not yet a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a try, real cool way to do so, you can get a free $60 account. And all you got to do is click on the link below the video to get set up for that. Free $60 account, you can use that on any of my daily packages or anybody else over at DocSports.com. And again, $60 free package starts by clicking on the link below the video. Uh, well, here's what we did in the college basketball conference attorneys. Now that they've come to a conclusion, we're 62% winners, and uh, we're looking to get that 17-5 and five winning years run. 16-5 and five the last 21 with winning years, and we're off to a nice start at 62% against the spread. And that, of course, includes the college basketball conference attorneys, the big dance, the smaller tournaments. Uh, but we head into Tuesday's card. Uh, which is, of course, tomorrow. Uh, tonight, there's no college schedule. But we had a Tuesday's card with that 62% winning record of the college basketball conference tourneys in tow. We had Yale on Sunday. was our only college basketball play and got the win for us over Harvard. NASCAR, we're now two for two. We've had two to win pick selections uh, through the first two weeks that we brought NASCAR to DocSports.com last week in Phoenix, this week in Fontana. And we cashed again with Kyle Busch. And uh, we're now up eight units in the two races that we've given out to win picks in NASCAR racing. And we handicap it every week. We just started bringing it to DocSports.com last week as far as our two win picks are concerned. And we are two for two and up eight units. Don't miss out on any NASCAR folks. We've been doing this for a couple of decades, over 20 years of handicapping and winning at NASCAR, the left turn circuit. Even if you don't like watching it, if you like making money, uh, that's what we've been doing for most of the last 22 years. I uh, wanted to mention also that we're going to talk about the sharp moves thus far uh, in the NC2A tournament in just a minute, but we have a Big Dance podcast, uh, DocSports.com, the Vegas Beat Big Dance podcast on Monday night. It'll be available late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, and uh, there'll be me, there'll be Bernie Fratto, there'll be Alan Harris, Indian Cowboy, all going to be a part of the Big Dance podcast that'll be um, recorded on Monday night. We'll be talking about each and every region who we think is going to get to the Final Four, who you might want to take a shot at plunking your money down on as far as to win the overall tournament and, the, and a few point spreads along the way too. So be sure to check that out. That'll probably be available early Tuesday morning. We'll be recording on Monday night. Forgot to mention NBA yesterday. We had our four-game win streak snapped in the NBA yesterday with the Atlanta Hawks, who uh, lost by 10. It was a situation where they were getting anywhere from 7.5 to 8.5 points. They got outscored at the free throw line. I think it was 26-7. to 7. I know they were out attempted. 33 to 10. You're not going to win or cover too many bets when you are outscored and out attempted that badly at the free throw line. That was a case for us on Sunday, and the Hawks fell two to three points short of the point spread. They were covering late, and it was a 50 50 shot down the, uh, down the last few seconds, but we're unable to get over the hump. Uh, so we'll look to start a new win streak. We have a play over at Doc Sports in the NBA on Monday. It'll be available on Monday morning again at docsports.com, and we'll look to make it five out of six with our pro basketball plays. Hit that seven-unit play on Saturday in the NBA, and uh, we'll have to get right back in the winning column on Monday. As far as, uh, before I get to the free pick, as far as some of the sharp moves that have taken place thus far in the big dance, and by the way, we'll have a bigger preview on Tuesday's video. Uh, we just want to uh, give you one of the sharps have gone thus far. A couple of sportsbook directors here in Las Vegas have stated that they've taken their sharpest money on Yale plus the points over LSU, New Mexico State plus the points over Auburn, and one of the bigger movers, Oregon, over Wisconsin, where the Ducks opened a short dog, and they're now laying a point and a half over the Badgers. And I was kind of looking, guys, at what these teams have to offer. Made a couple of notes as I was um, jotting down the matchups when they were announced, the pairings were announced on Sunday afternoon. And first of all, when you look at New Mexico State against LSU, LSU, of course, their coach was suspended a while back, and and uh, as far as New Mexico State's concerned, they shoot lights out from inside the three-point line. I mean, we're talking upwards of 57% with their two-point tries. That's one of the top 10 best in college basketball. The problem is, is they take so many darn shots from behind the arc. They make about 33 34% of their three-pointers, which they've done well. You can't blame a team that's won as many games and lost as few games as they have uh, this season. We'll see how that matches up against LSU. Again, the LSU Tigers are going to try to push them outside and uh, see if they can make those three-pointers. They certainly will oblige and take a ton of threes. But uh, if New Mexico State can uh, get some nice plays going on the offensive end against LSU and get inside that arc, uh, they do have a real good shot to hang this particular number. 
It's an incredibly balanced basketball team. I think the top score averages less than 12 points per game. So there's a lot of weapons on New Mexico State who can get you those 8 to 11 points, uh, and they could be a little bit of a thorn in LSU's side in the opening round of the big dance. Another one of, uh, that I mentioned was Oregon against Wisconsin. I, I get a little bit leery when, I'm, when I see a team that's getting a lot of action that really had to play their way in in the tournament maybe the last few games of the regular season. And that was the Oregon Ducks. They won, what, eight in a row now. Uh, they won the Pac-12 championship. And if they don't make a big run at the end of the season and in the tournament, they were, I mean, they were firmly on the wrong side of the bubble and they might not have made it in uh, to the big dance. They wouldn't have uh, if they didn't go on this big run. So I get a little bit leery when a team has to exert that much energy, both emotionally and physically, just to get in the dance over the last week or two of the season, including uh, their conference tournament and their opponent, Wisconsin. Well, it's Ethan Happ and not a lot else on the offensive end. We get that. They are the best defensive team, though, in the Big Ten. And uh, they should play well again on the defensive side of the court. As far as the teams that they played were considered the top play, uh, top teams on their schedule or the most difficult, talking about Wisconsin, uh, they only won about two out of nine of those top team, top games. Um, and enlisted in this order, you've got Purdue, you've got Maryland, you've got Michigan State, Michigan, Marquette, Virginia, some of the teams uh, that were the best teams on their slate. And again, they only won two of those nine matchups. But if you look at Oregon's neutral court power ratings compared to those teams that I just mentioned that gave Wisconsin trouble, Oregon, with my power ratings, would be an underdog to any one of those teams that I just mentioned. Again, uh, there's not a lot of value on the Ducks at this point with how they played to wrap up the season and to win the conference tournament. So we'll be looking at that one. We didn't jump on Oregon. I want to look a little bit more into it before I make a play on the Oregon-Wisconsin uh, clash. But again, there's a couple of the, there's three sharp moves so far, and there's uh, a little bit of an analysis on a couple of the games uh, that have been getting sharp action thus far. Again, the sharp plays on Yale, on New Mexico State, on the Oregon Ducks thus far. And again, uh, Monday night we'll have that big podcast that we're doing, and then my Tuesday morning video uh, will jump even further into the big dance. Um, if you missed these early line moves, it's okay, man. A lot of times I'll play 80% of my big dance games in the opening round after the moves have already happened. Give it a day or so. And uh, you can see where sometimes Steam Chasers overreacted to the point spreads moving, and you can go against that, and all of a sudden you're looking at a pretty good card and a pretty good record by the end of the opening weekend. So, again, we'll be on some of those. We'll talk about them on Tuesday morning's video. Be sure to check us out. As far as the NBA is concerned, on Monday we're going to back the Celtics laying three and a half over Denver. And listen, the Nuggets have been a money burner on the road. They've covered six of the last 20 away from a Mile High City. And you look at the Celtics playing some of their better basketball of the season. They've won five of six. Uh, they did have a couple of injuries to note in Saturday's game. Uh, they lost in the game both Horford and Hayward. Gordon Hayward is listed as doubtful. Uh, there's, it's saying neck for the injury, but he is on concussion protocol. It looks like Horford is going to play, though, on Monday night from uh, all indications. And I think what will happen in this particular game is you'll see Boston, the rest of the team, pick it up the slack for Hayward. And again, that line uh, is reasonable at three and a half. Open three up to three and a half. But again, Denver, they've won three in a row. All three came at home against very winnable opponents or beatable opponents. Now they go back on the road where they've co covered just six of their last 20. We're going to recommend and give you an opinion on the Boston Celtics minus the points on Monday in the NBA. And again, don't forget over at DocSports.com on Monday, I am involved in the NBA. Got one play on Monday. We look to make it uh, five out of six, five out of our last six in the NBA in the win column at DocSports.com. And again, that'll be available Monday morning. If you like these videos, by the way, be sure to click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. We do appreciate those who have done all of that so far. And uh, I'll listen, let's put Monday in the win column. Let's win these NBA games. And uh, we'll be back 4 a.m. Eastern, Tuesday morning, 1 a.m. Pacific. And we'll be talking about the play-in games, talking a little bit more in-depth about the NC2A Big Dance and the smaller tournaments, the NIT, the CBI, all that good stuff, because there are, all, are always some diamonds in the rough and some gems in those smaller tournaments. So anyway, that'll be Tuesday morning, 4 a.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. Pacific. But Monday in the win column, I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com.